When adding primitives to a scene in ZBrush, we can click on each one in turn and add them to our scene, to our project. However, these are primitive objects that have not yet been drawn onto the canvas, so you'll see each of them has its own name, cylinder 3D, cone 3D, etc. As soon as I draw this onto the canvas and enter edit mode, you'll see here that in this quick list, as soon as I enter edit mode, this primitive has been duplicated and is now called cone 3D underscore one. Um, this is still a primitive and it does have its initialized parameters allowing us to do stuff like change the taper or the inner radius, for example. Um, but now, um, if I try and append any other append any other subtool to this, you'll see that the appended subtool will automatically become a polymesh 3D or a sculptable mesh. This is not a primitive and as such will not have the initialized parameters of a primitive like the original one. So in this way, if you start off with a primitive first, you can ha append sculptable objects and you can still have access to your initial to your primitive parameters. So you can still modify this with your sculptable objects in the scene. If, however, you have, and I'm going to create a, a Polymesh 3D from this, which will take this tool and duplicate it into a new tool, which is a Polymesh 3D. So if in this instance, any time I try and add a, any other primitive, it's not going to do it. As I said, it will always convert it into a Polymesh 3D when appending new objects. So the only way, if I'm working on sculptable meshes here to work on a primitive, is to open up a separate tool, and then that will be a primitive which will allow me to modify its parameters. Um, let's do something like this and maybe make it obvious what it looks like. So now when I go back to my Polymesh 3D object, because these are all Polymesh 3D, now I can, after having made those modifications, I can append that primitive, the squashed sphere, into here. And again, it will convert it into a Polymesh 3D, but at least we could modify its parameters while it was in primitive form. If we decide we want to change that, we can go back, change, uh, change its height, for example, into something even smaller again, or change something like that. Go back to our main tool and append our now flattened primitive again as a Polymesh 3D object. So now it's sculptable. So if you do want to modify parameters, do it in a separate tool and then append it back in because it will always be converted. Hope these tips help and as ever let me know if you have any suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see and do please click subscribe. Thank you, bye.